My name is Dr. Saeed Haki. I'm a professor of urology at the University of South Florida. I'm going to start by just showing what the Foley catheter is and then compare it with the Lotus catheter. The Foley catheter <clears throat> was named after Dr. Foley and it was invented back in 1930. To activate the Foley catheter, first we have to lubricate this and put it in the urethra and to the bladder. Okay, once the urine comes out of this end, where this is connected to a urine bag, then the healthcare provider will have to inflate a balloon, and that balloon is filled with fluid, usually anywhere between 10 cc to 30 cc of fluid. If you imagine that the cup of my hand here is the bladder neck and the trigon, this is the most sensitive part of the, of the whole bladder is the trigon. So here it is sitting on it a balloon that is one gram for each one cc is one gram sitting on it plus this catheter is 18 grams. So here is about anywhere between 38 to even 55 grams sitting on the trigon, the most sensitive part. Now then, if we look at the eyelid or the drainage side, which is right here, right on the top, way above the balloon, so the, there is always a pooling of urine around the catheter. We call it residual urine. This pooling is the major cause of cardi or catheter-associated urinary tract infection anywhere between 20 to 50 cc. Also, the, the, the Foley catheter, fundamental difference from the Lotus catheter, it depends on the bladder neck for stability. So the bladder neck stabilizes the Foley in. However, we have to put a, what we call a, a, a stabilizer to the Foley because not, all, not because we want to p keep it in position, no, because we want to make sure it doesn't hurt the bladder anymore. So the sta stabilizer for Foley is meant to protect the bladder neck because this depends on the bladder neck. And this is the flawed of the Foley catheter. Not only you have a residual urine, the drainage is way up. You also have a balloon that is containing fluid that is not compressible. Now, accidental pull of the Foley catheter is not rare, it's common. If you do that, then you're going to tear the bladder neck. And in female, that will be translated into some kind of incontinence, stress incontinence, urge incontinence, or even total incontinence. This all depends on how much tear. Not only that, you get tear of the urethra, and there's bleeding. If the patient is on Plavix, the patient on aspirin or Coumadin, they bleed profusely. And of course, there is pain. So pulling out the, the, the force to pull it out ranges between 20 pounds to 50 pounds. It depends on the balloon, the size of the Foley. We have done some lab tests on this to show that the, 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 it's a tremendous force, enough to tear a tendon, which is one of the most powerful part in the muscle that attached to a hand. So when you pull it out, it's going to cause tremendous damage. Also, the Foley catheter has a tip, and that tip is about 2.5 to 3 centimeter, that tip. And the dome of the bladder sits on it, okay? And above the dome, you've got the intestine, the, the whole bowel, we call it, small and large intestine. In the female, you've got the uterus. Uh, all this is, and the intra-abdominal pressure, pressurizing the bladder. 
within six hours you get redness at the dome of the bladder and I have biopsied that redness and the biopsy result come as acute and chronic inflammatory process at six hours in every single Foley catheter. There's not one that is excluded. So not only you have residual urine, you have also this tip causing irritation of the bladder. The first sensation for any human being to urinate normal is 50 cc. So if there is 50 cc in your bladder, then you will need to urge, go and have a pee. You want to go to the bathroom. If you're in a meeting, you tell your brain, hey, wait a minute, let's wait a little bit until it comes to a stage, 100, maybe 150 cc, and then your brain will say, oh no, you have to pee, otherwise you're going to wet this, whatever you are in now. So, so here we have 30 cc plus another 20 to 50 cc residual urine. So this Foley catheter will give you an, a constant urge to urinate. We call it bladder spasm. And we give ditropan, we give all kinds of medication to the patient to cool him down. So this is the Foley. Now then to remove the Foley, you need another sterile syringe. And what you do, you go again and you aspirate the fluid you put it in, okay, like that. And then the balloon is almost gone and you pull it out. Inflating of the balloon of the Foley catheter sometimes occurs inside the bladder. At times, it's outside the bladder, that is, in the urethra. And if you do that, it causes a lot of pain to, to the patient. It causes tear of the urethra, and there's bleeding, and that does happen. And any tear of the urethra it, your patient will, be, will have urethral stricture and sometimes he'll be impotent. And that usually, unfortunately, it doesn't happen immediately. It happens like a year later, two years later, so you cannot link what happened to the patient. He developed a stricture a year or two later. Well, we don't know, we can't prove it. So this is one of the pitfalls. Now, this is the Foley catheter, all right? Now, so you need two syringes, sterile water to activate it. So is it simple or not? Okay, we come to the lotus catheter. This is our lotus catheter. You put it in the patient and you put it in the bladder until it reaches the, and then the urine comes out of here and all I have to do, pull, hold on to this, these two at the ends of the bellows, and you pull it out. And all of a sudden, you have a flower configuration. And if you look at it, the drainage is complete. There is a tip here, but the tip is half a centimeter, not 2.5 centimeter. And this is, sometimes it's longer than this. And also, this sits on a non-compressible, while this, as you can see, is compressible. So you have a better drainage. Not only you have a better drainage, you have no residual urine in the lotus catheter. The tip is only half a centimeter. The tip here is a lot longer, all right? And if the patient pulls it out, no harm is done. The fundamental difference between the Foley catheter and this, the Lotus catheter does not depend on the bladder neck to stabilize it. It's only for you to remove it, you need no more than three pounds and it's out. And this is a rubber, it's elastic, it's collapsible. It collapses, you can see, it collapses, not like this. 
you try and pull this one out, it doesn't. So here, three pounds, collapsible. Here, 20 to 50 pounds, non-collapsible. You pull that out, and also this catheter cannot be inflated inside the urethra. There's something called urethral opening pressure. The force to open it is a lot less than opening a urethra. So now once you, if, it, if this catheter is not open, it's going to drop. So, or if the patient has a median lobe, that means something in the bladder or some tissues grown in the bladder from a suprapubic or from a granuloma, this will not operate because one of the wings will go inside and it'll drop or it won't drain. So you will know that you did not put, this is not in the right indication. This type of the lotus was not right for this patient. So you have to make sure that this patient needs this type of lotus catheter. So, and the weight of the lotus catheter is 16 gram. This is 18 grams without the balloon. And you add one gram for each cc, then you have a, a real difference between them. Now then, also, the Foley catheter cannot be used, and we are applying now for an FDA for this, in other sites like intermittent catheterization. It cannot be used to drain the stomach in gastrostomy, or cannot be used to drain the suprapubic, or cannot, can be used also to do the, the kidneys. You can't do that with the Foley, you can do it with this. So it has other applications.